Welcome back to the third part of our Power Query series. In this clip, we'll focus on statistical and mathematical operations for numeric columns and explore different ways to add new columns to our datasets. If you're just joining us, make sure to catch up on the initial two clips of the Power Query series, where we introduced the essentials of Power Query and demonstrated how to manipulate and transform data efficiently. Get ready to unlock the potential of any dataset with some powerful techniques. The statistics tool is used to perform statistical operations in numerical columns. To perform this exercise, let's resize the dataset with some selective columns. Choose category, city, country, customer ID, profit, quantity, sales, ship date and shipping cost columns. Change the data type of profit, quantity, sales, and shipping cost into decimal number. Select the profit column. Go to Transform tab. Then Statistics 2 and choose some operation. It will return the value of total profit made in this superstore. Again, go to Statistics 2 and then select Minimum Operation. It will return the minimum value from the entire profit column. Similarly, Maximum Option will return the maximum of all the values from the selected column. Median will calculate the median, Average will return the average of profit, Standard Deviation will return the standard deviation of profit, Count Values will return total non-null value of the selected column and count distinct values will return the unique value from the selected column. Now, select the customer ID column and run count distinct value. It will return the number of unique customers in this dataset. Here we can see that total 4,873 customers made orders from this superstore. The standard tool in Transform tab is used to perform basic math operations in numerical columns. Select the Quantity column. Go to Standard and select ADD. Enter a number to add to each value of the selected column. Enter 10 in this input field. Here we can see that the process adds up 10 to each value of the Quantity column. Go to Multiply. Enter 10 in the input field. It multiplied each value of the quantity column by 10. Similarly, the Subtract method subtracts specified value from each number of selected column. Divide method divides by specified value from each number. The Modulo method returns the remainder from specified value. Now, select Sales column. And choose Percentage. Enter 50 in the input field. It returned 50% from each number in the sales column. Again, choose percentage OF method. Enter 1000 in the input field. It returned the percentage of each value contributes to the entered value, which is 1000 in our case. Now, select the profit column. Go to Rounding, and then Round UP. It rounds the decimal values of selected column to the next integer value. Again, select Round Down. It rounds the decimal numbers of selected column to the previous integer value. Once again, select Round. Enter 2 as the decimal place. It rounds all the values of profit column into two decimal digits. Go to Add Column tab and click on Column from Examples tool. At the right side of the data preview area, a blank column will appear with the header name Column 1. Here, type the value of first row of the column country. Philippines. 
then type opening bracket, and then the value of first row of the column city. Bacolod city. Then type closing bracket. This will create a new column named merged, where we can see the concatenate value of country and city columns. In this way, we can create a new column based on the values of some example columns. Go to Custom Column. Write the column name as Profit Per Quantity. In the right side of the panel, from the available column box, choose the Profit column and click Insert. Enter a slash. Again, choose the Quantity column and click Insert. Proceed with this custom formula. It returns profit per unit sold. It will help to assess the profitability of individual items. Now, go to Conditional Column. This feature allows to create new columns based on conditions that we set with other column values. Set the new column name as PL status. Choose the profit column. Choose is greater than as operator. Set the value 0. Type profit as output. Then add another clause. Again, choose the profit column. Choose is less than as operator. Set the value 0. Type loss as output. In the L section, type break even as output. We can see that here is a new column named PL status, which shows the profit or loss status of that specific order. If we run the index column tool, it will create a column with index numbers for the entire dataset starting from zero. If we choose from one, the index number will start from 1. Select any of the columns and click on Duplicate Column. It will create a new column that duplicates the value of the selected column. From the Date tool, we can extract different types of date elements from a date column. Select the Ship Date column. Convert the data type as date. Go to Date, and then choose Year. It will create a new column that contains only the year of the shipping date. Again, choose month. It creates a new column that contains only the month value of the shipping date. Here is a detailed list of what other functions in the date tool will do to the selected column. Select the sales column. Go to the View tab and check mark on column profile. At the bottom of the screen, we can see the value distribution of the entire column. Also, we can have descriptive statistics about the column. Like, how many error values are there, how many empty values are there, how many distinct values are there, what is the minimum, maximum, average and standard deviation of the selected column. And that concludes our Power Query series with this final installment. We've delved into a variety of techniques designed to unleash the full potential of large datasets, preparing them ready for analysis. Stay tuned for our next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon, so you don't miss out on our upcoming tutorials. Thank you for watching.